Okay, so guys, uh, stoichiometry is what we're going to be talking about today, getting into it. What is it? Um, the quantitative relationship between your ingredients and your products, all right? your reactants and products. Now, it comes down to a specific chemical equation. All right, this would allow a person, doesn't have to be a chemist, but it can allow a person to determine um, how much reactant is necessary to form a certain amount of product or um, how much of a reactant is required to completely react with another reactant. And so they give you like this little example below. Uh, in this picture here, let's just zoom in a little bit more. All right, we have a cup of flour, two eggs, half a tablespoon of baking powder, and that will give us five pancakes. Okay, so much like a chemical equation, this recipe shows a numerical relationship between your ingredients or reactants and then your products, the pancakes. So for example, since two eggs are required to make five pancakes, all right, it would follow that eight eggs would be needed to make 20 pancakes. So simple things like that that you may not realize is chemistry. All right. Um, so again, just much like a chemical equation, but the deal is that your uh, chemical equations have to be balanced. They have to be balanced, or otherwise this doesn't quite work. Um, so in a balanced chemical reaction right here, all right, like N2 plus 3 H2O is going to yield 2 NH3. So we have one molecule of N2 for every three molecules of this, and it would give us two molecules of this, and then they just increase the numbers. So one mole of N2, three moles of H2, two moles of NH3. This is the mole ratio. This is needed. Absolutely, absolutely needed. So to go from any um, one substance to another in a relationship like this, all right, we are going to be using this mole map, this flow chart. So if we're trying to go from anything over here, a mass, a volume, uh, the amount of particles or moles to any one of these four over here, all right, this center conversion you need to take, all right, the amount of moles based on for the uh, balanced chemical equation of the substance that you want, which we would call B, divided by the number of moles of substance A. Now, this that I have highlighted comes from a the balanced equation. All right, so we just kind of said what stoichiometry was. We talked about it. So in a mole-to-mole -mole conversion, what we are going to do is you are going to read the problem, and you're going to find out what you're given, and you're going to underline it, and you can label it A. That would be like your first step. Second step, figure out what they want. Figure out what they're looking for. You can underline that and label it uh, letter B. Then what we would do all right, is here you would write down what you underlined for part A, like you know, it, it could be two moles of whatever. It could be H2, it could be H2O, it could be uh, O2, it could be iron. It doesn't matter. It depends on right, what the problem dictates. So that would go here in the starting block. We would put a line underneath like that, drop down our first little bridge. This is going to give us all right, our conversion factor to go from here to figure out how much of the other substance we can make. Or is going to be needed. This is very, very important, and this comes from the balance equation. So that's why we spend so much time balancing. So I leave like a space here. I write moles of what I wanted. That's why I underlined it and labeled it B. So moles of whatever the substance is. Again, it could be N2O, it could be NO, um, H2, O2. All right, again, depending on the problem. And then underneath, moles, blank moles of substance A. So it would be the same all right, formula as this guy here. We leave those blank. Now, these numbers, where the heck do they come from? All right, these guys are going to come from the coefficients in a balanced equation. All right, it could be a 2, it could be a 1, it could be a 3. They have to be whole numbers, though, remember. And then once you have all of that done, all right, what you will do is the units on top over here of mole A, on bottom, 
mole A, they will cancel out, leaving us with the amount of all right reactant, other reactant or product that we we, we need or we're looking for. So what you would then do is multiply everything on top equals divide by whatever is on bottom. So with that. I'm going to take a look at our all right thing here. We are looking at this equation. So right now, if we look at this, what are my coefficients here? What is the coefficient for n? N2. Coefficient. One, right? There's there's nothing there, so we would say it's a one. What about for the hydrogen, okay, and for the NH, uh, NH3? All right, those are super important. All right, Th that, those are our mole ratios. So for every one mole of N2, we need to have three moles of H2 in order to produce two moles of this guy. All right, it's like, again, it would be like, oh, we need one egg, three cups of flour to, you know, create two things of some whatever baked good. Now, we're going to start with the basic ones, the mole to mole problems. And that is the simplest one because we are going just from, we have to cross over. So we're going to wind up doing, all right, moles of A, this is where we're starting. So to go from one box on this map to another, you have to have a conversion factor. Because one unit has to get canceled out to move on to the next. So we're going to have what we are given in the starting spot, and then we are going to use this conversion factor here in order to solve for our answer. Now, I know these are probably these are somewhat already worked out, but we're going to do it again anyway, and I would like you guys to do it with me as I'm showing. All right. So first example, it asks how many moles of H2 are needed to completely react with 0 0.75 moles of N2. So what are you actually given? Hint, it's the only thing with number, a number in there. All right, 0 0.75 moles of N2. So I underline that and I label that A. You guys should all do that right now. All right, so we first underlined what we were given. We underlined it and labeled it letter A. What are we looking for? How many moles of H2? So that is what we're looking for. That is what we want. So I'm underlining that and I'm labeling it B. Not not how many, I just write moles of H2 because there are going to be problems once we get into it. They may ask you for what is the mass of something. And so knowing whether you're looking to go to moles or grams of something, that is a big deal because then it's going to wind up showing you on the map where you're going to need to go. If we're like, look, we're given moles of something, but we want to know how many grams of those pancakes were instead of how many, we got to do not only one conversion, we have to do a second conversion. Okay, so like I showed here in my little handwritten notes, okay, we found one, what we were given, labeled it A, found two, all right, what we want, label it B. So three, what we're going to do is we're going to take, we're going to write the given amount of mole A, and we're going to put that in what I call the starting spot. So we are given this 0 0.75 moles of N2. Yes, you have to write the whole thing out because you need to make sure, okay, units and everything cancel. It's very, very important. All right, so we create our line. Hold on.
All right. Sorry. So take what you're given, put it in the starting spot. All right. You do your little underline piece here. Drop down. All right. Our little divider. Now, what we want, that has to be on top. What we were given, that has to be on bottom so those units will cancel. So mole A underneath, mole B on top. So what was A? It was N2. So I'm going to leave a space here. Mole of what we were given, N2. And then leave a space. Moles of what we want, B on top. So mole of H2. It's very important to all right, have these guys labeled so we know when we look back at our chemical formula, balance formula, we are writing down the correct coefficients. Speaking of, what were these coefficients? What is the coefficient, guys, for H2? So we look up at the balance formula. Three. H2. N2, it would be one, all right, because there was technically nothing there. So that is to tell us that it is a coefficient of one. So now since we have moles of N2 on top and bottom, those units will cancel out, leaving us with the desired unit we wanted, moles of H2. And then we would multiply everything on top and divide by everything on bottom. And when you do this, this is going to come out to be 2.25. And then you have to, all right, again, correctly label it, moles of H2. 0.75 times 3, right? Sorry. Hold on. So when we go from, all right, given amount of this to our new substance, okay, part 5 would be, after you do the coefficients, multiply everything on top and divide by what's on bottom. And this will tell you, all right, um, how many how many moles are needed to completely react with this amount here. Why is this useful? Yeah. Essentially, all right, if you were actually listening when I was going over stuff instead of on your phone, you would have seen, all right, it's essentially, if you want to think about it, like um, a recipe. So the example that was given... The example that I was given, all right, one cup of flour, two eggs, a tablespoon, all right, these are the exact like ratios needed to create five pancakes, all right? You're hungry for breakfast, you want five pancakes, you need exactly like these things. You don't want to have any more or less, right? You need those exact amount of quantities, but like let's say you only had three quarters of a cup of flour, how, then how many pancakes could you wind up making? So that winds up affecting, all right, the ratio needed. You would still have to use that balance equation, but now you're changing the new number, so it's going to give us a different output, um, which is very, very useful for companies that make products, all right? So they, they want to know, like, all right, well, I have, like, if you're making Coca-Cola, you need sugar, you need water, um, you need CO2 for the carbonation, you want to make sure you have enough of everything, right? You don't want to have like way too much excess sugar cane, but not enough water because you bought all that sugar. Now you've wasted so much money. So they have to do calculations and stuff like this based off of their formula that they use, right? Like their recipe that they need in order to get products or figure out how much stuff they need to order. But we're doing it with our chemical equations. All right. Next example that was given is here. Example two, how many moles of NH3 can be produced from 0 0.84 moles of H2? So what first, when you get a problem, what you want to do is you want to underline what you're given. All right, it's usually going to be with a number. Label that A. What we want, you want to underline and label B because that's what we're looking to go to. So that would be how many moles of, all right, they want moles of NH3. That will be our B. Okay. 
So that was step one. Step two, step three, take your given, put it in the starting spot. All right, throw out your underline and then your, your little divider. Next step, four, right? We want to write down moles of B on top, moles of A, but you can't just write B and A. You have to use all right, the element or the formula of the compound that you're looking at. So we said B was NH3, so that has to go on top. So moles of NH3. Mm-hmm. And then underneath would be, we have to get rid of H2 here. So that has to go, moles of H2 have to go on bottom in order for us to be able to cancel out units and just get this one thing. Okay, now these spaces here, those blanks right in front of them, again, those numbers come from the coefficients of our balanced equation. We're still dealing with that same equation from example one. So going back up to the top, or it being right here on this one. Coefficient of 1 for N2, 3 for H2, and 2 for NH3. So what number would go here? Blank moles of NH3. What is the coefficient? 2, so we're going to have 2 there. What is the coefficient for H2? Three. And so that guy, right, three, will go here. So we have moles of H2 on top and bottom. Those units can cancel. Lovely. And that's going to leave us in the unit we wanted. And then, step five, multiply everything on top, divide by what's on bottom. So toss in your calculator, 0.84 times 2 equals, and then divide by 3 equals. Oops, sorry. And we're looking at 0.56. So 0 0.56 and the unit moles of NH3. What does mole even mean? Mole is a count. It's a count. Um, like we, we said it yesterday. So like when I say the word dozen, how many does that mean? Twelve. Twelve. So when I say mole, mole is... Uh, I had it up yesterday. It's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles of whatever that substance is. Because atoms are so infinitesimally small, you can't just mass. We don't have any instrument created that could just mass one atom. So we take that large quantity amount, throw it on a balance, we get a mass. So for one mole of carbon... On your periodic table, it says 12.01 grams. So basically, if I, were, you know, if you wanted to say instead of mole, you're using the word dozen, right? If I said, well, 12 or a dozen um, carbon atoms would be 12.1 grams. And you look at oxygen, a dozen oxygen atoms would be 16 grams. But replace the word dozen with mole. It's just a much larger number. It's a count. Okay, the another last minute little example here. Um, I'm gonna just write this one in. All right, so just example three. Uh, how many moles? of H2 are needed can be are needed to produce Two point five moles of NH three. 
So we write that down. So what am I starting with here, guys? What is what am I given? What is my starting piece? H two. Both of each two. And the two point five. Okay, good. So this 2.5 moles of the NH3, that's A. I underline it. That's step one. Good. Moles of H2 is what we're looking for. That is B. So step one, step two. Yep. Step three, take your given letter A, put it in our starting block. So 2.5 mole of NH3. When people ask this question, I really don't have an answer. It just has been that way since I've been doing chemistry, um, right? If like the problem is written out as moles, but like sometimes when we write it out in stoichiometry, we just write M-O-L instead of M-O-L-E. It just is that way. I don't know. It's been in like a bunch of textbooks I've seen. So just how we do it. All right. Conserves a little space. Not much, but. Okay. Throw that in. Boom. Next step. All right, that was our step three. Okay, moles of B on top, moles of A on bottom, because we have to cancel out the NH3. So we need blank moles of NH3 on bottom. And what were we looking for? Moles of H2. So that is going to be what's on top. Now these spaces, where do they get found from? Coefficients of our piece up here. So what is the coefficient? of H2 and what is the coefficient of NH3? Yeah. Two. Great. So that was our step four. All right, we figured out what these guys mole ratio from our balanced equation. Okay, moles of NH3 cancel because we have one on top and one on bottom in our setup. Great. And then step five, multiply everything on top. Divide by what's on bottom. So 2.5 times 3 divided by 2. And we get 3.75. Uh, 3.75, and that will be moles of uh, H2. All right. Very, very good. So finish writing that down, and then I will hand out our um, assignment, and we can start with that. All right. Uh, I may allow that. All right. So in number two, guys, we have to balance our equation first before we can uh, accomplish these. So, again, we spent quite a bit of time with this. So, break these down. We have N. There's only one of them. H, you have three. And then we have O, where we have two. Other side, it's not impossible. I'm going to show you a shortcut. Okay, we have two nitrogens. We have two hydrogens, and we have one oxygen. Bet. Okay, normal convention, we probably try and do the nitrogens first, right? All right, so let's just do it. We have two on this side. We want to have two over here, so we do that. Whatever you multiply by becomes the coefficient. Remember that. Now, that coefficient applies to everybody in that compound. So we have that 3, that hydrogen also has to get multiplied by 2, which gives us 6. Right now, are my nitrogens balanced? Yeah. Are the hydrogens? No. But can I multiply 2 by something to get 6? Okay. Yes, I can multiply it by 3. That 3 becomes the coefficient, which applies to everybody there. So this oxygen has to also get multiplied by 3. So right now we have two nitrogen, two nitrogen. We have six hydrogen, six hydrogen. Oh, dang. We have two oxygen and three. Dang, that's so annoying. 
we would wind up right like it's like the closest thing that those guys can share is like a six and then you have to go back and change everything else so here is a shortcut because this o2 is isolated by himself we didn't need to do anything we didn't need to change anything is there any number that i can multiply two by and get three 1.5 now i know i said all right we can't have um, decimals or whatever here uh, as our coefficients. But that's correct, but here's the trick. So if I do this times 1.5, that will give me 3, and then, then everything here would be balanced. Everything here would be balanced. But, like I said, we can't have this, this decimal here, this, like, this 0.5. So what you can do, though, is double it. To get rid of this 0.5, you would need to multiply it by 2. But you cannot just multiply the 1. You have to multiply everybody. So I throw up a little parentheses on the outside, put a 2 here, and the 2 distributes. So 2 times 2 is what? 2 times 1.5. 3. 2 times 1. And then 2 times 3. What is this going to teach me? Obviously, two, 2 times 1, 2 times 1 is 2. But. 0.5. Oh, but then you, yeah, 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 okay. And now I got it. So now we have our balanced equation. Um, now, now you can do these problems. Okay, underline what you are given. Label it A. What are we given? We're given 20 moles of NH3. Okay. What do we want? What are we looking for? Moles of H2O. Blank moles of H2O. That's B. Okay. Step three. Take what we're given, put it in the starting spot. 20 moles of NH3. We need moles of blank moles of A on bottom so they can cancel out. So moles of or moles of NH3. Moles of what we want B on top. Now, where do we get the numbers from? Coefficients. Okay, so what is the coefficient here of what? What is the coefficient here of H2O? Well, not three. It's six, okay? And then what is the coefficient of NH3? Four. Four. Okay. Moles of NH3 cancel because they're top and bottom. And then five, step five. Multiply what's on top, divide by what's on bottom. What is it? <laughs> what's two times six? What's two times six? Twelve. Just throw the zero at the end. One twenty. One divided by four. Good. Thirty of H2O. NH3's got canceled out. That's what we were, we were looking for, moles of H2O. So this is our, our final answer. Okay. And from there, it's now, it's repeating. So you guys have quite a few examples to go back and look at. Okay. So it really stems from balance equation, because that is super important for our ratio here. What we're given goes in the starting spot. You have to recognize what's given. Okay, I had some kids today that were still like they weren't quite sure. Pretty much the hint is in this problem, the ones I'm giving you today, at least, it's the number. You're given with a certain amount of something. That is your A. That's what we're starting at. Then we're looking to find something else. This is B.
right? And then we go through our setup. All right, so I want you guys to complete this 